know, way back in the 1700s uh -huh. with the French and here at Belmont the city tried to maintain the structure. Okay. As you can see right there, it was originally designed for coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, are they doing this thing like who do who do it right here and I'll show you the entire process. Okay, nice. The chocolate making process from the cocoa tree uh -huh. to the chocolate bar. Okay, nice. Yeah. yeah. Once again, I want to welcome you to Belmont Estate and a pleasant good morning to you all. Morning, morning. My name is Sheldon. All right, guys, so we're going to pause here for a brief moment to explore the chocolate making process. As we progress within this tour, you're going to get cocoa tea sampling as well as chocolate tea sampling as well as opportunities uh -huh. to walk on cocoa. Yeah? Yeah? Take out your shoes and do it? Take out your shoes and walk on cocoa. Wow. Yes. Right. So the chocolate making process all uh -huh. starts with the cocoa tree, as you may all know. Right. And I'm certain that you know what a cocoa tree looks like. Yes, it's very short. There are some little branches. And... So on the cocoa tree, you're going to find this. What do you call it? The cocoa pot. Yes. Yeah? The cocoa plant was actually first discovered in the rainforest of the Amazon, the Orioko River Basin. Right. Then it was popularized in Mesoamerica by the indigenous people. Anyone here likes history? Yes. History? Yes. So Paul likes history. History. Yes. History. Yes. History. Yes. history. Mm -hmm. All right, so who was the indigenous people in Mesoamerica? That was the Mexicans. The Mexican Mexicans. Mesoamerica would cover Mexico, yeah? Right. Mm -hmm. So you'll be the Mayan people. Mayan it sounds to make cocoa tea. In fact, they consider the cocoa tea to be the food of the gods. Okay. Yeah? They used the beans as currency and they gave the cocoa tea to their strongest warriors. So yeah. I might have gotten some. <laughs> Strongest warriors. I might have gotten some. Right? The cocoa plant was introduced in Grenada in 1714 by the French. Since then, up to today, Grenada is producing and exporting cocoa. Okay. However, here at Belmont Estate, we do not prioritize export. Because we have a chocolate factory that you will see shortly, we use our cocoa to make chocolate. Yes? Any questions? Comments? Mm, none for now. Sounds good. No? Yeah, good. Let's go on to the next one. Are you ready to... So every day at 7 a.m., the workers head out into the field from the blossom to a fully ripe cocoa farm, yeah. three to four months. Okay. From a baby seedling mm -hmm. plant to a fully bearing cocoa plant. An adult plant. Yeah, um, two to three years. Okay, great. Okay. Right. Another question? Yes. All right, every day at what time the workers head out in the field? Seven. Seven a.m., they head out into the fields to harvest the cocoa pods. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The stems are very tough and the pods bear on the back of the tree. Therefore, it's not wise to climb the tree to pick the pods. So how do they pick the pods? So the pods are on the tree like this. The cocoa knife has a crook like structure. I'm going to slip the stems, the pod falls to the ground. Yes, if you're going to make it with your hands, we gather up all of the pods and crack it open. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where do it? Yes. Where do it? The crack and open at that which spot? When we pick in the fields, we uh -huh. gather in the fields, we crack it open. One time, I need, okay. Yeah, one time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. If you notice, as you all may already know, the pods is very hard. So how do we crack into it? You come on it. You come on a stone, cutlass, a, a machete. Oh, machete. Yes. So what they do? They chop, twist, and then you split it and crack it open. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chop, twist, and crack it open. Exactly. Crack. Now let's see what's on the inside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so what you can do, you can go ahead and taste. 
-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so you want to suck, suck on it? On you want to suck on it? Do not bite. Don't bite. It's going to be bitter. It's bitter inside because it's. What does it taste like? Guys, what does it taste like? Those who sampled, what does it taste like? It tastes like skin. Sweet with a little time. Sweet with a little time. Sweet with a little Right, question. Does it taste anything like cocoa powder or like, or like chocolate? No, no. No. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah? Right, so after we crack open the pods, after you're finished, you can just start the seeds in the bushes. Yeah? So after we crack open the pods, we remove the seeds. Put the seeds in fine bags or purpose bags, right? You know, locally, right? And then we transport the cocoa beans and the cocoa seeds bags. to the sister right here, right? It would sift away any loose branches or excess parts that might be cut in between the seeds, mm -hmm. yeah. Then after sifting, we put back the seeds in the bags, we collect the seeds right here, we just put it in, okay? Yeah, we collect the seeds right here. And then we put all of the cocoa seeds, or cocoa beans, as you know, seeds or, or beans, right. right here in what is called the fermentation bin. Fermentation bin, okay. How long you leave it here for the process? Six days. And cocoa okay. seed, banana leaves. You cover seeds. it with banana leaf and cocoa bags. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Cocoa bags. Oh, these covered here? Exactly. Oh, like here, yeah, covered. So that it can ferment, locally mm -hmm. say it's sweating. Okay. Yeah? Sweat the cocoa. All right, question. What do we do with this? Um, exactly, natural back in fertilizer. All right, so the fermentation process would begin to occur uh -huh. when the natural yeast and uh -huh. natural sugar found in the pulp that you just sucked on okay. converts into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Okay. The alcohol, of course, liquefies, runs through all of the beans, bitterness within the cocoa beans would subside, flavor develop and the cocoa will transform into a golden brown color. Okay. Yeah? Six days for fermenting, every two days we move the cocoa seeds from one bin to the other. That is to regulate the heat within the beans and also to properly oxygenate the cocoa beans okay. to prevent rotting. Yeah? Okay. Now we can look to see what's happening in there. It's gonna smell kind of bad. <laughs> so what you're smelling is not me. <laughs> okay. So all in such a ton brown as yet or just all supposed to be that brown? No, it's supposed to be more brown. More brown. Okay. okay. So this is here for about Four days. Four days, okay. Yeah, so it has about two more days. Wait, you, you transfer it when? The six day but transfer it? Every, every two, two days. Two days you transfer yeah? it? So okay. The, this batch was first here. Right. And every the, two days you move time, it here, then you move, move it. it. Okay. Then the next two days you're going to move it out. So the oxygenated and by my bed. The alcohol okay. just evaporates. What's that? The alcohol, it just evaporates and it runs off, yeah? And while we turn in, it evaporates as well. So we don't use it. Right. We don't collect it. Okay, nice. Thanks. All right, after fermenting, we move on to drying. Yes, this is a this is a processor. Oh, let's see. Yeah. How long how long you leave it to dry for? Eight days. Eight? Okay. Eight days. Well, five to eight so days. I guess the rain you just it sub it in. On the weather, yeah. You just push it in. It's, push it it's heavy. It's heavy. It's uh, a few a few persons. Yeah. Okay. All right, so here at Belmont huh? Estate, we have two primary <laughs> methods of drying cocoa beans. The first method is the sun dry method. The second method is the dry house or the greenhouse. Okay. This method that you're seeing right here is a traditional method. Right. That was done by our forefathers. In fact, the structure mm -hmm. that is built here was built in the late 1700s by the French to dry coffee beans. The mechanism? However, I always say, if it's not broken, do not fix it. Okay. We still use it today to dry cocoa beans. So you don't want to press a button or turn a lever or nothing to make it just... Nah, that's a traditional <laughs> way. Yeah? So somebody will come here and do this. How long they have to work on it for, like during the day and so on? You can turn it uh -huh. for about five minutes. Right. But every 30 minutes, uh -huh. you would have to come and turn it. Okay. Okay. Why is that, that seems tedious though. It's very... Yeah? Right. So this traditional method 
you don't go in in the Every car. 30 minutes, the workers would come mm -hmm. and walk on the cocoa. Okay. <laughs> they would remove their socks and slippers and shoes. Right. And they would walk on the cocoa beans to separate them. So yeah, what, they have a technique for the, the, the dance? They're dance. dancing or dancing to separate me. Yeah? Yes, yes I want to dance. Yes. But the reason is that if you notice, the sunlight only hits at the top. Right. You need to mix it up so that each bean can dry properly. And also, during the fermentation process, some beans might be stuck together. Together, together. okay. So, so they feed you, so it would separate, separate them. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But you really have to go into it then. That's so if you're brave enough. Yes. Look. Come on, eh? This batch is going to be the best batch they ever had in years. This one. This one? Why? Well, because the, the time process is six days, so it's, it cuts back the production time period. And I don't want to apply. If I have to do it, I don't want to have to apply pressure and damage your cocoa because I feel like I might apply pressure if I'm not doing it properly. Right. So I find like this will be the most effective method right. for me. This method is a more efficient method. Yeah. However, I personally prefer the next side method. Tell me why. As long as I got some uh -huh. guitar and some soca music. Yeah, you're dancing too. <laughs> but when, when the sun is like this, I don't think you want to be doing that. <laughs> All right, so what I want you to do for me is grab a bean. Grab one from this pile right down here. On my hair. Yeah. A rounded one? Also, you have to take out the shells. So the exactly. So what you see on the inside there is called a cocoa nibs. N-I-B-S nibs. Exactly. So what I want you to do... Right, what I want you to do is taste it. Bite into it. It's gonna be Sorting and grading, guys. So it's another process. It's a quite a long process. After drying, the dried cocoa beans are then transported to this table or this one right there to be sorted. Someone sits on this chair and manually sort each. Bean nah, man. By this, hand. nah, man. This is. This is too tedious, man. <laughs> Manually sort each bean uh -huh. hand. We sort by size. Large, medium, and small. It has nothing to do with the quality. It's because the cocoa beans would be roasted after. If you roast the big bean at the same time with the small bean, the smaller one would burn. Okay, yeah. So what do they do? Like the majority of them? Besides, I watch it, it's very nice.